Welcome to a full review of the all-new Škoda Octavia S, Octavia RS, and the special one, the RS IV. Today it's about the plug-in hybrid version, so they also deliver a sporty PHEV version. Last time we had the pure petrol RS, you can compare that later, and today the RS IV as the so-called hatch, so from the outside a sedan, but also with a practical hatch to be opened for the loading area. All the details in exterior, interior and of course the fun driving experience now in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front here, the base Octavia already gets a sportier front grille, leads over to the headlamps, standard LED, optional matrix LED, but matrix LED is also standard for the RS models. And they receive a darker front grille here, vertical fins, VRS logo. So VRS, they say in the UK, because of a trademark issue with Ford. And in Germany, we just say RS, but clearly all the badges, all the logos say VRS. Lower part also sporty style and especially to the white color for today, the black, you know, front spoiler and also rear spoiler, you'll see that really good contrast to that. The length is at 4 meters 69, 15 foot 4, 185 inches. Here available both as the hatch and as the combi. The combi would just continue right there with the roof line. And you know, I sometimes also say, you know, sedan or limousine or fastback, however you want to call it. I think it's definitely very beautiful styling right here with the falling roof line. Dropping line from design here above the door handles. Wheels come in Germany for example, standard 18 inch. It's also 18 inch right here with winter tires. And in UK 19 inch would be standard. Otherwise in other countries then, depending on the country specific, then an option. Um, but with summer tires and the 19 inch wheels it would look even more menacing. Contrasting mirror caps here in black, also black frames around the windows and you know nice design that's also in the lower area and what you can also see this here the IV version of the plug-in hybrid with the battery and they do not put them lower so it doesn't look that sporty because it sits a little bit higher or it's, it, it doesn't sit lower. <laughs> it's the right, uh, you know, right way to take it. Stand suspension is already a little bit sporty. Or you can go for the DCC, the dynamic chassis control, which is the adaptive suspension. We also have in our car here today. But also in this case then, for all the plug-in hybrid models, not sitting lower. And now to the rear, and especially this rear three-crawler perspective is so beautiful. I think the most beautiful thing about this vehicle with the falling roof line and then sporty rear in this new generation, horizontal tail lamps, nice signature. And then also here in the RS version with the spoiler lip, which is very well integrated, I think. Also a contrasting lower end. And then <whistles> massive fake exhaust alert. A job for the auto fuel fake exhaust police. Here you can see the outer tip. Is, I mean, it's quite beautiful design from the tip, but then on the left side, on the inside, the real exhaust. Somewhat then a transition at least to the outside tip. On the right side, however, it's just like a plastic cover. There's nothing in there. But it's all done that from the rear you get this more impressive look. So the question is now, would you like to have this impressive look from the rear and have the fake exhaust tips? Or would you rather try to avoid that? Put it in the comments. Yay, they still give us gas struts, right and left. And then the RS versions, 2 liter TSI, 245 horsepower pure petrol, or this one, 1.4 liter TSI, combined with the electric motor, also 245 horsepower, just where the front wheels, electronic differential lock in this case, 13 kilowatt hour battery, about 40 kilometers of pure electric range. And then there will also be the RS diesel, 2 liter TDI with 200 horsepower. That one, optional all-wheel drive, but here the PHEV and the pure petrol, front-wheel drive only. And the acceleration figures to one kilometers an hour, 6.7 for the pure petrol, 6.8 for the diesel, and here for our plug-in hybrid drivetrain, the RS IV, 
7.3, so about a half a second slower. And recharging in the front left, but only 3.6 kilowatt AC possible. First of all, door closing sound. Very solid, nice. Inside of the doors with a nice structure right here visually and also soft touch. Then microfiber here at the door on the inside, also well done. And here then specific RS features or VRS features here with the logo, steering wheel, flat bottom, red contrast stitches. Also already some microfiber here on the left side. And then there are sport seats with integrated head restraints like this. They would standardly come with a so-called thermoflux. This is a pure fabric material, um, also supposed to be very breathable. This here is an option with a microfiber. This looks quite fancy. However, some of the parts here are then also genuine animal skin. So that's of course not that good then for, for the animals and for the environment some other parts leather red so i would recommend to stick with these thermoflux seats they will deliver the same comfort they here just look a little bit fancier but also cost extra and classic skoda here with the umbrella at the inside of the door is always a nice idea getting inside here with a good comfort on this sport seats here so they're really offer good comfort also for tall people. You can also put the seating area a little bit longer. Electric control right here with two memory options. Steering wheel, manual up and down and out. Good and smooth process. So you really find a good seating position when you put the seat all the way down without the panoramic roof, which is optionally available. A lot of headroom here also with one minus 86 or six with one. Interior overview with a nice central and sporty style. Here the dashboard top part, soft touch and a nice structure as well. Then beautiful here with the microfiber for the RS version, red contrast, and then this central setup here with the ambient lighting is hidden underneath as well. Left side 10.25 inch digital instruments, standard. Right side normal Octavia would start 8.25 inch, and this one here, the RS, standard with a 10 inch screen, and soon more details to that. Sporty steering wheel, once again, you can see the setup here with a flat bottom, and this, you know, um, rather open design of the steering wheel definitely and here you have hotkeys for the infotainment system for example here driving modes and so on but um, the clicking sound is you know doesn't resonate a big quality or great quality in this, in this case i think and these are the digital instruments analog however on the right side just with the light here for the fuel status on the left side then for the battery status and the good thing here is actually a nice view but you can also switch the views depending on what you like this you know systems view or map view all over the place or like this so quite flexible and clear to read at the right side of the steering wheel you do control the digital instruments like this you switch the views like this and then here you can also activate the travel assist while driving and left side for the heated steering wheel if you have that option that's nice and here for the volume and click to mute or unmute and head-up display is always a nice option speed allowed speed and some gps info if you like for example so definitely a safety option to go for close-up of the infotainment system right here this is the main menu so actually quite well to control apple carplay integration looks like this and the optional canton sound system here is actually quite decent so i'm overall happy with that some bezels here of course left and right and the skoda system uh, here you can control the temperature so inside the screen that's better than with the slider there's a volume slider here in the lower area yeah we all know what we think about sliders the previous generation control was somewhat easier seat heating also here for example as for the control then there's also the second home menu you can individualize it as well this is then the gps sometimes it depends on the cloud connection you know how fast it is so um Earlier this morning it was faster and now at the moment it's lagging again a little bit. So I think it's really about their, um, you know, back-end cloud uh, capacities, which sometimes VW, um, Skoda and Seat in their new setups, they're you know, lagging, lagging a little bit behind. But, you know, as for the overview, it's actually quite decent. And for voice input, you can, for example, also use that. Set temperature to 23 degrees. Okay. 
so that worked but you see it was not working that fast it always didn't depend on the internet connection and i think also on you know their cloud um, service capabilities lower middle console two times usb-c chargers use the cable or wireless connection for apple carplay well then also android auto here inductive charging pad then the DSG shifting lever, shift by wire, no mechanical link, but therefore you have a smooth transition between reverse and drive mode. And here the S mode, this is sport mode, then you have both drive trains at once. No special recuperation B mode or something, however, here recuperation rather than via the brake pedal. Then here, middle console further, you put your smartphone in here or you can take it out then for a normal cup holder, that's possible. Yeah, sanitizing um, spray here, um, they put in there. And then this here, you can put forward the armrest, nice leatherette with the red contour stitches, and underneath some more space. If you want to see it more up close, there it is. Um, yeah, that might collect some scratches, um, but it looks quite fancy. And then here you can see this is the IV, so the wagon hybrid, and therefore you also profit here from this independent heating function. And as for the rear seating, here with the manual shades, that's always a nice solution. Hard pack at the inside of the doors at the rear. Nice setup here also with the same sporty scheme. And here, this is this smartphone or tablet holder. Skoda has placed it for display purposes. Getting inside here, the sporties are a little bit more voluminous than the normal ones, so you have less leg room in this RS version or the RS versions than in the normal ones, but still, sufficient head, uh, leg room and also headroom here for tall adults both front and in the rear that's always quite nice with the octavia however this you know smartphone holder here by the way or a tablet holder i would not use it i think because it also gives some rattling sounds while driving then middle console here you have a climate unit even seat heating for the rear if you pick that option below that usb-c chargers and a real power socket other than that you do have isofix on the seats right here and you already can fold the seats from here if you like. Now let's open this hatch, why this is called hatch, although the outside form is a sedan. Easily fits it with the big cabin trolley, 600 liters, like 640 liters with the combi. But here, the advantage of the combi would actually be more this. This would work with the combi, but not, would not work with the hatch because here and we are limited in the height. So this is the basic difference. But here, of course, a good compromise that you can have a sedan on the outside appearance, but a wide hatch opening fastback style on the interior. Then here, 107 centimeters in length, or one meter and seven, and a good meter here also in width. And we can fold the seats from here. There we go. And then we just need to push it here a little bit with something you know more stable or with the luggage or something and here underneath you have space for your charging cables and one more look at how vast this opening really is so easy to load things in and out and then we can also do the child safety test whoa, whoa. definitely too much torque at this mechanism welcome to thomas's active driving lounge got our octavia RS IV. Even though it's a plug-in hybrid, after all, it's an RS, therefore the active driving lounge. And we put it back to the sports mode with the shifting lever here, DSG. And then you see also the DCC selection jumps to sport and also the preload and everything, electric boost combined with the combustion engine. So both drivetrains starting 40 km an hour are active now. That's 170 kilometers an hour. Good acceleration indeed. So about a half a second slower than the pure petrol engine and also the diesel of the RS. Interesting sound boost. I mean, this is not the engine you're hearing. This is a sound actuator. <laughs> Sorry, I really have to laugh about that. It's a 1.4 liter turbo petrol engine. So yet again, you can say, I mean, yeah, when you really think about the facts, it's a little bit pathetic. However, I mean, the sound actuator was designed in a very nice way. I mean, it sounds good, you know? So when you open your mind and say, okay, 
then it's actually nice. So, I mean, why not? Whatever. So, just to note that, I would like to see your opinion to that one. Do you rather think, yes, it's pathetic? Or would you say, like, I mean, come on, I'm driving this car. It is not an unsporty car. The acceleration is quite significant, as we've seen. Why not do that, you know? And even V8 engines get sound actuators, meanwhile, because the cars are so well insulated. So, power from both drive trends really works very well. Being in this hybrid mode, both active. When I put it back here, the shifting lever to the normal mode, the sound disappears. I'm also in the normal DCC driving mode, for example. So the suspension is not as stiff as before. As you see here, also an option for the RS. Today the road is a little bit wet, therefore, when accelerating, you can see out here some ambient lighting, it's actually quite nice. So, the road was a little bit wet, so you could see, maybe also in the instruments, there was some wheel spin. The ESC had to be active in a way, but it wasn't disturbing the steering too much, it was somewhat okay. And we did realize the thing with the VW Tiguan in the plug-in hybrid version, with the very, very same drivetrain, very same horsepower output, also in wet roads, and was what, not that pleasant to drive. This one here, electronic differential lock, whereas the petrol RS has the mechanical differential lock. Yeah, I mean, I feel that this setup here they found in the RS IV is a little bit better than with the Tiguan. So the Passat drivetrain with the reduced horsepower amount, same goes for the Skoda Superb plug-in hybrid. These two were very good to drive, actually. And with the Tiguan 245 horsepower, I think it was just too much power on the front axle. I will also test it further, you know, in, um, you know, in the next corner where I'll accelerate out. So far, I have the impression it's a little bit better as for the sub setup right here. So let's see, a little bit reducing the speed. Now out of the corner accelerating. Yeah. Yeah, when it's red road, I wasn't even flooring it all the way out. Um, and I think the problem is, when they have the higher horsepower output here for the front wheel drive only cars, and then you have wet road, and the electric torque sets in immediately, and not in a certain power curve. I was saying outside temperature of uh, um, four degrees, by the way, is a warning for freezing. I think it's a little bit too much, you know, when the road is wet. So, with dry road, it won't be such a problem, but it really seems to be that it's too much power on the front wheels at wet roads, and yeah, maybe they need to do some fine-tuning there. However, I felt that in the Tiguan, the setup was worse than here. Here, I felt it's a little bit more harmonized overall, so I think it's, it's somewhat okay, definitely, you know. And it's a nice drive. The Octavia is a very good car, no doubt about that. It feels very compact and the handling is really awesome. Steering input, so precise, no dead zone area, it's a lot of fun. So a very neutral, balanced handling. You feel one with the vehicle quite quickly. So you have a very good feeling for the car. Cruise control, activate here on the separate column and then on, you know, with thumb, if you have that option, you can also activate the travel assist, the most elaborated assistance system right here. And then the car is also being kept in lane. So I keep my hand at the steering wheel, but theoretically the car is doing everything by itself. Um, it makes, you know, the, yeah, it makes it a little bit more nervous, um, somewhat but still, you know, also quite okay, you know. You can also deactivate lane assist or the travel assist quite quickly um, here with the instruments, that's also okay. Because it's wet and also in the tunnel, the noise level is a little bit higher. So noise level is, I would say, also okay, but not the best. There I, for example, feel that in the VW Golf, which is the same platform, the noise level is a little bit better. Once again, sports mode, from 85 kilometers an hour acceleration. And goodbye. So that's 170 kilometers an hour again. You know, when wet road, I need to be a little bit more quiet, careful, of course. Yeah, that <laughs> rolling sound actuator sound once again. So once again, a good acceleration, really like that. So I think 
when you just feel the power, the power wise, there's not such a compromise here with the IV version. You do have the power, you do have the motorway comfort. Um, the seating is good as for the seat form on these sport seats. Again, as I said, you can also stick to with the base Thermoflux pure fabric seats. As for that, lane change here at higher speeds, also quite stable. You do feel that the DCC here in this IV version from the RS is not set lower as with the other versions. So it feels a little bit less sporty, but then again a little bit less, a little bit more comfortable. So then the question is like, what's your main emphasis? And good of course with the plug-in hybrid, here now a situation where I have to reduce the speed and that energy is not completely lost. At least I can gain back some of the energy via recuperation. And how much you consume, it really depends if you have this combination of electricity and petrol. You can do something like two or three liters or more kilometers. And then of course electric con um, consumption. Plus, plus that. Depends on how often you recharge. Maximum of about 40 kilometers, pure electric like range, so it's 20 miles something when it's really full. Maybe you drive all electric during the week and um, make some longer trips at the weekend or so. That could be a use case, for example. And then the pure consumption of the combustion engine when the battery is completely depleted is more or less the one of a comparable combustion engine, but more than of the modern 1.5 liter TSI MHF. So that one was rather like five liters something, and this one is rather like seven liters something here. So 30 MBG US something, between 30 and 40 MBG UK. For this one here, pure combustion when you don't have any battery power left. So. I would really just go for this one if you can frequently recharge and then that you'll be also even better in the fuel economy with the 1.5 TSI. However, especially in Germany, most people will pick this vehicle because with the governmental subsidiaries and tax savings and so on, it will be way less expensive than the true petrol RS, especially if you lease it as a company vehicle. And that will probably at this moment be the main argument for this have version right here. And now to some everyday driving situations, normal city traffic and so on. And when you drive slowly and the battery it is somewhat recharged, then predominantly you drive all electric and that's cool because it brings down the noise you know, from, from the other vehicle. It just gives you a calm feeling and also very smooth feeling. And for most accelerations, the electric boost is also just more than enough. You can also have this gauge there on the left side, which signalizes you to which part the boost goes. And you also feel a threshold in the throttle pedal. So at which point you, you know, exceed this threshold and then the combustion engine hops on. DCC in the normal mode or in the comfort mode brings you the best comfort do have the optional DCC equipped with this vehicle and I also highly recommend to go for that one. Even with the DCC I think the comfort for the Octavia could be a little bit better. However, you know, we have the 18 inch wheels here and it's also winter tires which be a little bit softer and so on. And then also when DCC is set to comfort and so on, plus the IV plug-in hybrid version here is not set lower as the other RS models because here they want this you know extra battery protection so to speak not that something would fiercely happen to the battery then with this couple of millimeters but just as a precaution and but as for comfort that's actually good for the vehicle so I feel that this will be the most comfortable comfortable RS version however then it's also somewhat the least sporty one Yes, you do have the electric boost, which helps you in, you know, from, from, from the get-go, from, from the start, really, when, you, when you're at zero. But then the pure petrol engine is more than half a second, like, yeah, clearly more than half a second faster. The diesel as well in the acceleration. So, yeah, the pure petrol version is definitely the sportiest one, no doubt, although they have the same horsepower figure. But this one here, remember, has... Um, lower displacement as for the core engine 
and you also somewhat do feel that. However, I have to say in city traffic and so on, the RSIV has the advantage because you can use this electric drive. You basically have two vehicles in one. You have the electric car then for the city, and then you have the, you know, the power basically for the motorway and so on. And of course, if you have these governmental subventions, subsidiaries and so on, then it can, can make really a lot of sense monetary-wise. And of course, it's, if energy is cheap in your country, for example, and you can recharge frequently at home. So I would ask myself the question then, how is my charging infrastructure for my plug-in hybrid drivetrain? And, you know, what about sporty driving versus mix comfortable sporty and then I would decide if we would just go for the pure petrol or this IV here. City driving is really perfect so you also profit from this rather direct steering that's actually quite cool so it's not only something for sporty driving but also for city driving and parking in and out so it's easy to control smooth but very direct yet again really precise the overview for the hatch is not too bad. Of course, now you know with this whole dark covering and so on, it also appears quite dark. You can also see it in the camera picture. And the combi will have a better view to the rear because the hatch is then you know quite quite high in that rear when I look through the back mirror. So the combi does have an advantage right there. Driving-wise, there is no difference between combi and the stand whatsoever. You know, when going downhill, I can also use some recuperation. When I hit the brakes a little bit hard, there's more recuperation. Remember, there is a big difference then if you compare it to the Passat GTE or the Skoda Superb plug-in hybrid, because there, when you put the shifting lever backwards, actually, you are in the so-called B mode, so more recuperation. But here, when I put it backwards, it's the S mode, the sports mode. So we also had that in the IV, which was not the RS, maybe they are show the you know relation between the models there in this case so here yes I do have stronger recuperation now when I'm off the accelerator pedal but yet again the combustion engine is on so it's more like using engine brake and recuperation at the same time something like that so this is really meant to be in the sports mode that you have more boost and more power that's why they put the S mode then here. You could argue that the B mode would have been nice. Um, the normal driving mode is rather rolling, so there's not the philosophy of high recuperation when you lift the throttle. And also when you shift with the pedals here, which have a really nice form, it's about the combustion engine, you know? It's not about that you would um, change something as for the, the charging or something it's really that you are in these different gears as for that so what do you think about our driving part for today i'm really looking forward in the comments which rs would you go for iv the plug-in hybrid pure petrol or the diesel tell us in the comments and now to our conclusion for today with the skoda octavia RS IV or VRS IV. Well, the exterior, I think a very likable one, maybe a small A7 if you like. Here in the white with the black contrast, I think that comes quite well. But the pure petrol RS we had earlier in the very strong red tone, that was also a very nice one. But of course, you can pick the color freely, just you know, no matter which drivetrain you really pick for that one. So, which RS is the best one? The real VRS to me is still the pure petrol one, just most fun, I think. However, this one can make sense if you save a lot of taxes or something and if you can recharge frequently. So I think it's more, you know, a money question. And of course, if you have this, you know, use case that you can drive all electric during the week and then maybe boost it a little bit over the weekend, then this one can also make sense. For all three models, TSI, TDI and also here the like in hybrid version, they count that they have a lot of space on the interior, especially in the loading area and the nice build quality. Infotainment system, a little bit more complicated than in the previous version. And also very, very nice sport seats. So, 
especially then with the Thermoflux base material, even more sustainable and also a little bit cheaper. I think overall the price performance ratio here of the RS molds is still a very good one. You get a lot of performance, not that a high price, good usability on the interior, still a very, very decent car here on the market. What's your take and which RS version would you go for? Tell us in the comments. See you there.